Hello and welcome to Act on Mental Health. My name is Sean and I'm a licensed mental health counselor here in the state of Indiana. Now on this channel, I try to cover a variety of mental health issues through the lens of acceptance and commitment therapy and relational frame theory, which is the science that informs ACT. Today, we're looking at how to work with perfectionism using the principles of acceptance and commitment therapy, or ACT. And this particular topic hits home for a lot of helping professionals and graduate students who are likely struggling themselves while also helping others. For me, perfectionism has both served me well and helped me to get the best grades possible, learning the ropes of the helping profession, and meet the challenges of some of the most difficult clinical cases. However, perfectionism has also mastered me in ways that befuddle me, like being so upset that I got an A- minus in graduate school because my GPA dropped from a 4.0 to a 3.96. Now, being upset is one thing, but it's what you do that causes the problems. And for me, I tried to argue with my professor about my final research paper, and I thought it was indeed better than what she graded it. And her remarks to me through email were, were pretty astonishing. She said, Sean, go get some rest. Such wisdom. Today, we're gonna look at perfectionism, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and what to do about it. Perfectionism is a common struggle that can have profound impacts on our mental health and well being. It's characterized by setting excessively high standards for ourselves, being overly critical of our performance and experiencing intense anxiety or distress when we fall short of perfection. But fortunately, there's hope. And today, I'm excited to share with you some powerful insights and techniques from the ACT Workbook for Perfectionism by Jennifer Kemp. So if you're willing to let go of perfectionism and be willing to allow imperfections to do all that it's meant to do in your life, stick around, you're in the right place. So let's jump in. Before we get into how acceptance and commitment therapy can help us overcome perfectionism, it's crucial to understand what perfectionism is and how it manifests in our lives. Perfectionism isn't just striving for excellence. It's an all-encompassing mindset that can have profound effects on our mental health and well-being. Perfectionism comes in different flavors, such as self-oriented, socially prescribed, and others-oriented perfectionism. Self-oriented perfectionism involves setting impossibly high standards for ourselves and constantly striving for flawlessness in everything we do. It's the voice in our head that tells us nothing we do is ever good enough, no matter how hard we try. Meanwhile, socially prescribed perfectionism is fueled by the belief that others expect us to be perfect. We feel immense pressure to live up to the expectations of society, whether it's in our career, relationships, or appearance. Finally, other-oriented perfectionism involves holding others to unrealistic standards and being overly critical of their flaws and mistakes. It's a reflection of our own insecurities projected onto those around us. Perfectionism isn't just about aiming high, it's about the crippling fear of failure that accompanies those high standards. We become so preoccupied with avoiding mistakes and criticism that we're paralyzed by the fear of falling short. And let's not forget about self-criticism. Perfectionists are their own worst critics, constantly berating themselves for their perceived shortcomings. Every mistake, no matter how small, is met with harsh self-judgment and condemnation. Now that we've gained a deeper understanding of perfectionism, let's explore how acceptance and commitment therapy can help. ACT is rooted in six core processes that can empower us to accept life's imperfections and live a more meaningful and fulfilling life. At its core, ACT teaches us to accept the presence of our thoughts and feelings without judgment, while also committing to actions aligned with our values. It's about staying in the present moment, letting go of the need for control, and taking meaningful steps toward the life that we want to live. ACT views perfectionism as a barrier to living a fulfilling life because it keeps us stuck in a cycle of fear and self-criticism. Instead of pursuing our passions and connecting with others, just as we are, and just as they are, we're consumed by the pursuit of perfection, which ultimately leads to dissatisfaction and unhappiness with ourselves and others. But here's the good news. ACT offers a roadmap to psychological flexibility. In the ACT workbook for perfectionism, Jennifer Kemp provides valuable insights and practical exercises to help individuals transform perfectionistic beliefs and behaviors. One ACT technique introduced in the workbook is getting to know your big bad which involves distancing ourselves from our thoughts and seeing them for what they are 
just big bad thoughts. The term big bad originated on the show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The big bad was the villain, or nemesis, whom the heroes fought throughout the season. The term now extends to other series. In Harry Potter, the big bad is Lord Voldemort. In Doctor Who, it is the master. In Marvel movies, it is Thanos. And in Batman, it's the Joker. In perfectionism, the big bad is the fear of failure that you keep fighting season after season. Everyone has their own big bad, these thoughts and feelings that bombard them. I must never make a mistake because if I do, I might get a bad grade. If I get a bad grade, it means that I'm stupid. People must always think I'm cool, interesting person. If they don't, they'll think I'm boring and won't like me. Personally, my big bad is that I'm incompetent in some way. You know, I just don't have what it takes. It's a fear that relates to most of my unhelpful perfectionistic behaviors and tendencies, and it keeps coming up in my life. By learning to observe our thoughts without getting entangled in them, we can reduce the power of perfectionistic thinking and create space for more flexible and adaptive responses. And you can learn this by using an extremely useful act metaphor called the passengers on the bus. The passengers on the bus metaphor goes like this. Imagine you are on a bus and you are the driver. This is your bus and only you can drive it. You determine the speed and direction. Down the road ahead is a life that you love, full of all the kinds of things that you value, such as a loving relationships, satisfying and challenging work, and making a contribution to others. On your bus are a bunch of passengers these passengers are made up of your thoughts, emotions, bodily sensations, and memories. And they have all hopped on your bus at some point in your life. Some of these passengers are helpful and kind, and they are willing to come along for the ride. They remind you of happy memories and satisfying achievements and say supportive things to you. These passengers don't bother you, and you may barely even notice them. Unfortunately, you have other passengers that are much meaner, bossier, and louder. They tell you when to turn left or right, when to stop and when to go. One of these passengers is your perfectionistic self-critic. This passenger is always evaluating and criticizing your performance. It tries to intimidate you by coming right up to the front of the bus and to lean in and insult you. Its voice is cold and harsh. This passenger is persistent and can be extremely loud. Names I've heard before include the bully, the mean girl, or the dictator. This passenger has been hanging around for a long time. It probably got on your bus in childhood or adolescence. Sometimes passengers sound like other people, such as a school bully or a critical family member. Remember that even if your passenger might look or sound like someone you, that you know, it has become the way that you speak to yourself. This passenger sounds so horrible that you might try to quiet your passenger. It can seem like your passenger will stay quiet and not bother you if you just do what it says. In the short term, this seems to work. Each time you follow the passenger's instructions, quiets down, but it probably does not stay quiet for long. Many people might say that doing what the passenger says doesn't take too much effort, but they also don't make much progress down the road. Another way to keep your passenger quiet is to fight with it. You're determined to stop it from being so critical, so you argue with the passenger, reason with it, try to outwit it using logic, or plead with it to leave you alone. You believe that if you could just win the argument, the passenger will be quiet or get off the bus. Fighting with the passenger takes a lot of energy. The more you fight with your passenger, the more energy and focus you're giving it. Your passenger knows how to fight, and you are playing its game. You get worn out, but your passenger does not. And for as long as you fight, you are giving it more airtime. Also notice that to fight, the first thing you must do is to take your hands off the wheel and face the passenger rather than the road. Another common strategy I've seen people use to manage their passengers could be called the white knuckling approach. White knuckling involves gritting your teeth while you step on the gas, drive headlong down the road, pushing hard to make progress toward your valued goals. While the passenger tries to threaten and intimidate you, you actively push it away, telling it, shut up or leave me alone, and you keep driving. To drive this way, you must have one hand tightly gripped on the wheel, giving you the white knuckles. 
while the other hand is pushing back the passenger. While in the short term, this strategy might take you a few miles down the road, it usually doesn't work well in the long term and you never get into cruising speed. It's also difficult to enjoy life down the road while you are busy pushing your way your passenger at the same time. The truth is, is that your passenger will never get off the bus, no matter which approach you use. Your passenger has been learned and you can never unlearn them. This doesn't mean that your passenger will always cause you problems, but it does mean that it's always going to be hanging around somewhere with the potential to cause trouble. Fortunately, there is one way you can respond to your passenger that makes a substantial difference to how much it intrudes in your life. This way of driving is called mindful awareness. When your passenger is being disruptive, there are some simple steps you can take that will help you to make progress down the road. Imagine the following. You are in the driver's seat of your bus with both hands on the wheel. Your eyes are focused on the road ahead. You are looking toward your valued future and a rich and fulfilling life. You are in touch with how good that life feels to you right now. On your bus with you is your perfectionistic self-critic. At times, this passenger shouts at you from the back of the bus, and at other times, it comes right up to you and talks in your ear. Luckily, you know that it can't physically hurt you. All it has are words. You let these words wash over you and don't get caught up in them. You know you don't have to believe them. You know the passenger doesn't have any real power if you don't give it any. You take ownership of your role as the driver and continue to drive even in the presence of all the mean things the passenger says. You allow your passenger to hang around, don't fight it, don't react to it, and don't try to quiet it either. You don't do anything about your passenger. This approach to managing your passenger is called mindful awareness. The goal of mindful awareness is to recognize and acknowledge the presence of the passenger and to keep driving anyway. Building this skill of mindful awareness will take practice over time. At first, it might be difficult as the passenger can get very manipulative. Yet over time, once you focus your energy on driving and stop fighting your passenger, it's likely to quiet down. In ACT, we encourage clients to prioritize progress over perfection and to take small steps toward their goals using their values, even if they're not perfect. There are more exercises and techniques to explore, so feel free to check out the ACT workbook for perfectionism by Jennifer Kemp. The link is in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel for more content on ACT, mental health, and personal growth. Remember your journey towards a more purposeful and mindful life begins with a single click.